Hello everyone and welcome to Rima's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making this flexible flaxseed flatbread with just one ingredient. This recipe is great with meal prep and on-the-go lunches. So let's get started! The first thing you'll want to do is grind a little more than half a cup of flaxseeds and turn to a fine powder. Store-bought crushed flaxseed will not work for this recipe because it won't absorb the moisture as much as ground flaxseed. You want to keep processing your flaxseeds until they reach this fine consistency. If you have a coffee or spice grinder, that will work faster and better than a processor when it comes to grinding flaxseeds. The first version of this recipe is the bowl version. So to a bowl, you want to add a quarter cup of boiling water straight from the kettle. Then you want to immediately add the half cup of ground flax seeds to the water. This is optional, but you can also add a quarter teaspoon of salt for flavor. Then you want to stir this mixture until it forms a dough. Make sure you have the right consistency here. You want the dough to be slightly sticky, but not to have the pieces coming off the dough and sticking to your fingers when you attempt to knead it. If they do stick, you'll want to add more ground flaxseed. If your dough is too dry though, you need to add more water. The second version of this recipe is the stove version. So put a saucepan on high heat and add a third cup of water. You want to wait a minute or two for it to boil, then turn off the heat and add a half cup of ground flax seeds. You also want to add a quarter teaspoon of salt at this point. Now mix this together until it forms a dough and no pieces are sticking to the sides of your pan. To roll out the dough, you'll need two pieces of parchment paper. I like to outline the shape and size I'm aiming for on the upper parchment paper so I know when I've achieved it. In this case, I'm using an 8 inch white bowl to outline. Next, add your dough in between your parchment paper and start rolling it out until you achieve your desired size. You'll notice I'm having some difficulty rolling this out and that's because this is the bowl version dough. People may wonder why you'd opt for the stove version when the bowl version is easier, but the stove version dough is a lot more flexible and easier to work with when you're rolling and shaping the dough. Both versions achieve a very similar result at the end though. Now if your dough is giving you some problems, just remove the upper parchment paper and move around some of the pieces of the dough like this. Put them to where you want them to be so you can achieve your desired size or shape and then put the upper parchment paper back on top of the dough and roll it out again. When you're done, take off the upper parchment and use a bowl to cut off the excess pieces of the dough. You can use those pieces to form another flatbread. This dough should be easy to remove from the bottom parchment when you're done rolling it out. Now we move on to rolling out the stove version dough. As you can see, it's a lot more flexible and easier to manipulate into whatever shape and size you want. The rolling process with this dough was much faster as a result. Remove the excess dough so you can have your desired shape. The cooking process for both versions is the same. You'll want to place a large non-stick frying pan onto a stove top set at medium high heat and leave it there for at least 3 minutes. You should hear some kind of sizzle or noise when you add your flatbread to this non-stick frying pan. So you know it's cooking. Leave the flatbread on the pan for 1 minute to a minute and a half or until the bottom side is no longer sticky. Then use a spatula to flip it over. 
Cook on the other side for another 30 to 40 seconds, then take the flatbread off the pan. Now that was the bowl version, and I'll briefly show you the stovetop version, just so you can see that there's little to no difference in how they're cooked. As you can see, the end results are pretty similar for the two versions. Both flatbreads hold together well, but are pretty flexible too. And they're just delicious and perfect for making any type of wrap or sandwich you want. So that's it. Let me know how one or both of these versions turned out for you in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to support the channel by giving it a like and subscribing for more content. Enjoy!